Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White and this is Jason's Weird Reads and today is From the Hip number nine and if you don't know what From the Hip is you just stumbled here uh, for whatever reason. Um, this is just where I like to talk about uh, things in my life. I like to shout out other booktubers that I like to watch and I just like to shoot the shit from the hip. Blah. And as, you know, uh, yeah, I know how, how disgusting that is. I, 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 it's like, because I know that's disgusting, I, uh, I keep doing it. So, let me adjust my camera here. There we go. Alright, so, um, I'm going to start off with the shout-outs, as I uh, have been doing. Uh, I'd first like to shout-out, uh, and I kind of regret that I didn't ask this booktuber to participate in my video for um, uh, the, the collaboration I did for Lost Gems. Um, that video came out and it was, it was fairly successful for my channel and I, I want to thank again everyone who uh, who participated and I I keep keep saying that it's not all my favorite booktubers that I asked to be on that video because uh, there, was, there was one person who had to back out because they're extremely busy. It's totally understandable. Um, but there was people I forgot, and it's not because I, uh, I mean, they are my favorite, I have a lot of favorite booktubers, and uh, that's why I, I put a shout-out section in here, because uh, just doing a, a shout-out video, that's hard to do, because I always forget people, and then uh, I feel bad, and then you have to do another one, and then you forget more people, and, and so this one just allows me to uh, just, you know, release, release. <laughs> talk about people at my own pace and eventually I'll get to them all. So I, I regret not asking Lisa G. Uh, she has a blog that she runs called Pink Paradox as well. She has a very, uh, it's fairly new, well it's not that new, I think she's had her channel for a long time but she's recently been doing a lot of booktube uh, type videos and uh, for the last year, year and a half, I think. Maybe, it might be longer than that, but I really enjoy watching her. There's something about Lisa that's very calming, and, uh, and she just appears to be a very good spirit. And I really enjoy listening to her talk about books and her movie hauls. And uh, she did a couple of videos recently um, where she, uh, she went on vacation. I think she went home to visit her parents. And they live in a, a small town. I forget which country. It's like, I want to say Sweden, but I know it's not that. Maybe New Zealand? It's far away, <laughs> anyway. And anyway, it's just a small village, that, and it's very beautiful. And uh, it was a really, really cool vlog. I really enjoyed watching it. So definitely go check out Lisa G. She's really into horror, and I believe she's also into punk rock <laughs> and horror movies. So... She is definitely a, an excellent uh, booktuber to check out if you haven't already. Um, I also want to uh, I also want to give a shout out to Michael K. Vaughn. Now he he has a very interesting booktube channel. He releases a lot of videos. He's very prolific in the booktube community, and uh, he's growing uh, fairly quickly, from my understanding. But he he does a lot of uh, classic fiction reviews. Like, for example, uh, he has, like, uh, Cthulhu Mythos Monday, or maybe it's just Cosmos Monday. I can't remember the exact name of it. But he also has, like, a day where he does Sherlock Holmes, and uh, he also does regular uh, reviews and uh, other types of books discussions. But he's <laughs> he's got a quirky personality, and his dog looks punk rock. I mean, his dog has, like, a mohawk. <laughs> and sometimes this dog interrupts his videos, and I really enjoy watching uh, Michael K. Vaughn, and I think you guys would probably uh, get a kick out of watching him as well. Um, I also want to mention, I, I say these people, a lot of these people are favorite booktubers of mine, and I tend to watch most of their videos, but I haven't been commenting on people's videos as much lately. And there's reasons for that, uh, mainly because I watch a lot of booktube while I'm cooking, and that's that's not easy to do, to stop what you're in the middle of and to go and comment. And uh, 
but you know, I still, I, I still try to make an effort to comment on as many videos as I can. All right, so uh, in this period, since the last from the hip, I, uh, I got back to doing some polls. So, so let's get into the polls. All right, I'm going to start off with uh, an easy one. Do you write fiction? Yes, no, and I howl like a wolf were the answers you could choose. They're all still there in my community tab if you go to my profile and, uh, and click on the, uh, or tap on the community tab. That's where I post a lot of uh, polls and uh, other uh, information type things. So this one, do you write fiction? 49% uh, said yes. And that's actually surprising for two reasons. One, it seems a little high, and yet at the same time, it seems really low. I know, I, I constantly contradict myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, when I first started BookTube, I, I was under the assumption that like 90% of readers in the horror genre were also writers. Because if you're, if you're on Facebook, it seems like all the read, horror readers are, uh, are writers, but it, it's very much a, a delusion because uh, you friend these people because they're horror writers. And, uh, and then you start, it's almost toxic in the sense that uh, it, you're making yourself believe that all horror writers or all horror readers are also writers. And that can be very daunting. But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I welcome writers all the time, but you don't want your entire market being, or at least potential market, being oversaturated. If all readers are also writers, then there's almost no point unless you get like a really big, excuse me, unless you get a really big uh, a book deal, and that's nearly impossible these days. So 32% uh, said no. And 19% said, I howl like a wolf. And I'm going to just assume that they don't write either. <laughs> All right, so uh, next poll. Which do you prefer out of these two physical formats? Hardcover or paperback? Another easy one. Um, so 35% uh, said hardcover and 65% said paperback. Again, I was a little surprised because uh, when I first joined BookTube, there seemed to be a little bit of a snobbish attitude against paperbacks at the time. This is like about three years ago now. And since then, that's changed, I think. I've, there's one person who answered uh, in the comments of that post, and they said, uh, I think it was James Fetcho, actually. He said that uh, he likes hardcovers for display on his bookshelf and uh, the paperbacks for reading. And that makes a lot of sense to me because hard, hardback, hardcover books look good on the shelf, but they're not the most practical to read from, at least not all the time. If you're reading in bed, for example, now let me let me say I I've had plenty of really big books come crashing down on my face while I'm lying on my back in bed reading and and I fall asleep. It's happened more than once. Now let me tell you, a Kindle feels a lot better, but so does a paperback. But paperbacks hurt too, depending on the size of the book. If you're reading like a Stephen King tome, forget it. You you're probably gonna suffer some serious injury. <laughs> All right, and the last one for this one. Is dog earring pages okay? Now, I had two, or sorry, three answers for this. Of course. Are you a monster? Or uh, depends on the book. If rare, collectible, no. Then if not, okay. 17% said of course. 46% said are you a monster? Like, are you? And 37% said depends on the book. If rare, collectible, no. If not, then okay. This one isn't very surprising, honestly. Uh, I, I am, I, I make fun of dog earring because uh, it, it will ruin the page, right? If it's a collectible, hell no. But uh, paperback, uh, something you bought at the used bookstore, and you know, you can't always just make a, a bookmark on the go. If you forgot it, your bookmark, or you lost it, which I'm, I'm terrible for losing bookmarks for some reason. <laughs> So yeah, why not? Unless it's, uh, or if you borrowed a book from someone. 
So uh, I'm going to leave the polls at that, otherwise this video will be uh, really long. With some personal stuff here, um, I'm, happy, I'm happy to uh, report that uh, since uh, January 1st, 2021, 20, I have lost 50 pounds. Well, it's actually more like 47 pounds, but, uh, you know, round it up to 50 pounds. And let me tell you, man, it's been a challenge. Um, and it's not because uh, I'm working out and like at the gym at five o'clock every morning for two hours or anything like that. It's, it's more of the mental challenge that that's been going on with this. And it's not something I was expecting. Um, to say that you've lost 50 pounds, you think it's all happiness and, and greatness, but there's a weird thing that happens when when you do this and it, it's the fear of change because when your body starts to change you notice it and and it's not just that you look different which is fine I mean I'm not doing what I'm doing to lose weight to look good I'm, I'm doing it to get healthy because I want to live I want to I, I don't want to die in my 50s of heart attack so and you know since I'm approaching my 50s it's it's a good thing to maybe get in you know, and some healthy, uh, to get a healthy body now, rather than, uh, when it's severely needed. Even if, you know, it was severely needed before. Anyways, um, so, the fear of change comes with how you feel. You feel different, too. You, you look different, you feel different. And right now, I'm struggling a lot with sleeping. Uh, I've heard of, a. Uh, insomnia in regards to the keto diet which is what I'm using to lose weight and it's a real thing man let me tell you and, and my job really really makes it so much worse because it, you know I'm always bitching about this but if you don't know I work shift work or the continental shift which means I switch back and forth between nights and days every two weeks and so I'm never on a regular schedule and it, it's always bothered me I've always had trouble with it, but it's gotten a lot worse in the last couple of months. And I don't know what to do. It's like, when, especially when I'm on nights, I can't sleep. Um, when I go on the night shift, I wake up early, even when I'm working. It used to be, if I was, if I was working, so I worked 12-hour shifts. So during the period of time while I was working, I would, I would sleep, and I would sleep deeply for eight hours, easy. And now I wake up like after five or six hours and the rest of my sleep if I get any is really light and really really terrible and sometimes that bleeds into my day shift and so it's changes like that that uh, uh, that make it really 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 hard <laughs> but I'm, I've heard that the, the insomnia goes away I've heard that it's the it's like the microbiome of your gut is changing to a more healthy bacteria and and sometimes that transition or at least it's something like this that transition can lead to uh to insomnia and uh but that's not all because uh uh when i hit about the 40 pound mark i decided that maybe it was time because i've i've been on antidepressants for years now i mean many years <laughs> and i was just afraid to go off them but i've been wanting to try and so i talked to my doctor and he said, okay, we're going to taper you off. He's been wanting me to get off my, my antidepressants for a long time. And there's good reasons. If you're, if you're on antidepressants and they're working for you, then, then awesome, man. Keep doing it. But I've been wanting to get off them for a while because I felt that I reached a point where I, I didn't need them anymore. And they were doing more harm to my brain and probably to the rest of my body than good because there are harmful side effects to uh, long-term use of antidepressants. So, you know, given the amount of time that I, I was on them, I, I just knew that I had to get off them at some point if I want to get healthy. And so I did that. At the beginning of August was the end of the tapering. And at first it seemed to be going well, but but with the insomnia and the extreme heat that we were experiencing, I uh, I had some serious issues with depression coming back. I looked into it, and uh, apparently this could be just part of the withdrawals, because 
when you're on antidepressants, especially if you've been on them for a very long time, as I have, they, your body needs to adjust to that as well, uh, coming off them. And you can experience symptoms that are exactly, if not worse, like the symptoms you were taking the antidepressants to help with in the first place. So I've been, I've been in a rut <laughs> and I've been in a serious, serious rut. It's, it's almost painful. Um, but I, I seem to be coming out of it now. I, the heat really, really made it worse. And I don't know why that is. Uh, I was taking my salt. So I don't think it was that. I've been drinking tea. I hate mornings. I hate insomnia. And, uh, but, you know, uh, this really kind of led into uh, a reading slump. I, I find that when you go through things like reading slumps, there's, a, there's probably a, a strong mental reason for a reading slump. And I, I, as I got more and more depressed, now for me, depression isn't about necessarily about feeling sad or bad all the time, although that's, that's definitely part of it. For me, it's immobility. I, it, the more depressed I get, the more immobile I get. I, I almost get catatonic sometimes, where I just, I can, I can stay in bed and stare at the wall or stare at the back of my eyelids <laughs> for long periods of time. Um, of course, I, I don't because I can't, but given the chance, I will. And sometimes reading is just, it's painful. Instead of an escape, it's actually adding to the pain. Um, so that was kind of bad. Uh, it slowed my reading down a bit. But there is good news here, because at the beginning of the year, I set my uh, Goodreads goal to 55 books. And about a month in, I changed it to 50, because I was, I was reading the Malazan Book of the Fallen at the time, and that was seriously slowing my reading down. But, uh, but I since, since uh, got a lot of books in until late summer. You know what, I think uh, this is actually a trend too, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so basically the good thing is, is my, I'm at 49 books of my 50 books read, so I'm definitely going to make my yearly goal. I think I'm just going to keep it at 50, even if I end up reading more and more and more uh, than 50. I think 50 is a good goal. It's it's a lot more than the average reader. Um, I think avid readers are the ones who read 50 books or more, but I'm, I'm projected now to read probably around 66 to 70 books, depending on the si length of books that I read and how many, of course, I cram in before Christmas. But that's... I'm very happy about that. So, you know, there's two things I'm happy about. I'm happy about the 50 pounds I've lost in weight. And I'm also happy that I've reached 49. It's weird. It's almost 50 books. Uh, towards my Goodreads goal. And uh, so, you know, it's September. Um, so that's good because I still have like three months left uh, to get a lot of reading in. And Halloween is now upon us. At least it is for me. I, I always start celebrating Halloween in September. Um, at least that's when I start trying to feel the Halloween feels because uh, I love Halloween and this is honestly my favorite time of year from now until Christmas. Um, but this part is the most fun because of, uh, you know, all the horror movies. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my reading is going to reflect that um, in the near future. Um, there's some books I need to I need to read for interviews that are coming up and there's also um i've got some plans for january which is kind of far right now but i want to make sure i can do a, you know a decent job with this but i'm, I'm going to be doing a readathon a month-long readathon on weird fiction i'm going to call it weird january and i'm going to have a panel of uh, authors that i like uh come on the show and talk weird horror or at least weird fiction. And so look for that way like in the future in January. But there's some books from these authors that I, I'm going to ask. I'm, you know, this is just assuming that they say yes, but I want to read their books. But again, this is neither here nor there because that's 
fairly far in the future. I'm just planning for that right now. But right now, I'm reading uh, Queen of Teeth by uh, Haley Piper. This one's taken me about a month to read. And it has not, absolutely no reflection on the work itself. This book is it's, it's a it's a masterpiece um, of it has a lot to say about how we treat women and about how the government uh, treats women in, in certain places as though their bodies belong to the government or men have this uh, seeming opinion that a woman's body belongs to them even if they don't know them um, um, but one thing I really like about this book Queen of Teeth is uh, is how much this movie uh, this book could have been an 80s film and it would have it would have kicked a lot of ass also for the uh, my interviewing uh, uh, segment of my channel uh, I want to read The Hungry Earth by Nicholas Kaufman. Nicholas Kaufman uh, came to me via uh, Daniel Brom again, so thanks again, Daniel. And so I'm looking forward to it. I've never read Nicholas Kaufman. I actually started, I read two chapters last night before bed, and I'm really enjoying what I read from him so far, so it's going to be an interesting conversation, I think, with him. And uh, what else am I reading? There was a Goosebumps book I read recently. Um, and I didn't read it with my son. Um, before, when I read any Goosebumps books, I, uh, I would read them with my son. And uh, lately he hasn't really been into that Goosebumps thing. And so it's really difficult to get him to read something like that. But I've been kind of missing Goosebumps, honestly. I, it's just, it's just fun. And uh, I, in my little slump here, I've been I've been needing that fun, and so I read so I read uh, the Werewolf of Fever Creek. Sorry, the Werewolf of Fever Swamp by R. L. Stein, and I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, it's just it's just you know, children schlocky fun. But one thing that really surprised me about that book was how rather gory it was. It was. There were some questionable things <laughs> in that book that, you know, you just don't know if maybe maybe they should have taken it out considering it's a Goosebumps book, which is the, the age range, the target age range is like 8 to 12, and there's people being cut in half, and there's entrails and stuff. It, I was pretty impressed. Um, it was a, a lot of fun. Um, I'm also reading House of a Hundred Whispers by Graham Masterton. I'm doing this as a, a group read from uh, Rachel's uh, The Shades of Orange. I'm a member of her Patreon. And so it's her book, uh, Patreon book club read for uh, September. And House of a Hundred Whispers by Graham Masterton is, uh, it's, it's, it's a weird book and not necessarily in a good way. My biggest complaint, I was just talking about this today on uh, Rachel's discord that the characters there I I haven't read characters this flat and I don't know how long and it's really frustrating because unless people are saying each other's names a lot I, I often don't even know who the hell what point of view we're going by because there there are no identifying characteristics whatsoever they're all the same person seemingly but the the plot is very interesting or not the plot but what's happening in in the story the the haunted house and i say that in quotes because it's not exactly a haunted house per se um that's fascinating it would have been a really really good i'm i'm about 50 percent, maybe 60 to 70 percent through it and at this point i'm thinking it would would have been a really awesome book had the characters been a little more lively a little more I don't know, a little less uh, paper board cutout. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. Um, I read Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. This, I, I read this as uh, in preparation for uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, I ended up bumping 
my hardest chainsaw to read a house of a hundred whispers but it's coming next but i i wanted to re read camp slaughter as sort of like a, a farewell to summer because summer was approaching its inevitable end as my son went back to school so in that last week i had my own little summertime camp <laughs> with sergio gomez and it was a lot of fun i i really enjoyed my time with that with that book it was it was just fun you know there's nothing serious being said or done it was just good old slasher and that's what i needed and i'm looking forward to getting to uh my heart is a chainsaw and i also read my first first grady hendrix and this i think is awesome because i have like three grady hendrix books and i haven't read any of them except for unless you count paperbacks from hell because that's one of the three and but i haven't read the whole thing i just sort of glance through it and read bits and pieces here and there every time i want to go look through it which is often but i've never actually sat down and read it cover cover to cover uh but the first grady hendrix book i read was we sold our souls and uh, it was i think a really good place for me to start reading grady hendrix because this this book is metal. <sighs> and let me tell you, it's metal. Um, Joe Hill did a, his first full-length novel, Heart Shaped Box, uh, was about a musician. And uh, they kept calling it, like, death metal when it was nowhere near death metal because whenever they described their music, it was more akin to ACDC and Led Zeppelin. That's not death metal, man. But We Sold Our Souls, that's heavy metal. They, they talk about Slayer. There's so many bands that are mentioned in here. You can tell. I mean, Grady Hendrix, he has to be a metalhead. And that, that makes me happy. And one of the things that he talks, or that is just, I wouldn't say discussed, brought up, uh, has a feel of, a very strong feel of, is doom metal. I have high respect for that. And, uh... So this book was, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed my time reading it. And so I'm looking forward to reading more Grady Hendrix in the future. Now, planning to read, uh, I got uh, an ARC by Chad Nicholas called Shade. I've seen some uh, booktubers release their reviews uh, fairly recently for this one. I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, speaking of Rachel from the Shades of Orange, her Patreon book club is going to be reading The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury in October, very fitting, obviously. And so I'm gonna be reading that. And I've never read Caroline by Neil Gaiman, so I think it's about time that I jump on that train. Because uh, while the audiobook is narrated by Neil Gaiman, and I could listen to that dude read a phone book. Seriously, man, he has such a calming voice. And I wanna get into more, more middle grade horror because I, th I find that even though there's always like a good moral uh, sort of uh, lesson in middle grade, um, they're just fun. Um, I, I really enjoy the fact that middle grade will take typical horror tropes and expand upon that and make it fun. Where adult fiction can definitely do that as well. But it, it's, I don't know, middle grade just seems more schlocky. Uh, especially goosebumps so i don't know we'll see how that goes so maybe maybe october october will be filled with middle grade i don't know uh we'll we'll just have to see on that all right so that is my my giant from the hip number nine thank you for uh for listening especially if you made it this far if you made it this far leave a little pumpkin down there in the comments let me know that you uh, made it this far and i i truly appreciate you listening to me just gab on about my own my own dumb life and all the weird things i've been going through and my reading habits so keep being safe keep being productive and i'll catch you guys in the next bookish video